Oh wow, mm. this is my kind of food. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ray the Bee. I am in Barcelona, Spain, and I have 48 hours to check out as much of the plant-based food scene as possible, along with their sites that they have and tourist attractions. So let's check everything out. So for starters, flax and kale is one of the first options you'll see on Google when you search in vegan food. I couldn't resist, so I decided to go and try it out for breakfast because they have such an extensive menu. They list the allergies, it has a really cool vibe. So I decided to try their plant-based bacon and cheese bagel because I mean, cool, right? However, unfortunately, Unfortunately, the texture of the coconut meat was really weird. I couldn't even finish it, which is a huge sign that I didn't really enjoy it because I always eat my food. However, the place is a cool vibe. They do have a lot of other things that I've heard is really good. I just didn't get to try them one this time. It's definitely worth checking out. I mean, there's a reason it gets all the reviews and visits it does on Google. Up to you. Luckily, just up the street in Raval, there's vegan bowls that offers food and some specialty lattes as well. But the reason I came here was for the desserts because I'm a cookie monster at heart and I was very happy with this it vitalized my taste buds because it was ooey gooey and moist and I enjoyed every single bite next I went to check out Boqueria market because I wanted to see if there was any vegan snacks I could find and there was a couple stands that had vegan empanadas that you could choose from the only thing is they microwave it so it kind of changes the texture but they're not bad besides that you can always get your olives fresh fruit fresh fruit juices paletas and of course fresh bread now for some sites that you need to see. About 15 minutes after Sagrada Familia, you'll find Roots and Rolls, which will give you a vegan sushi experience you have to try. I am at the beautiful modern Roots and Rolls in Barcelona, and they specialize in sushi rolls vegan sushi rolls and vegan Asian fusion. They have everything from starters to entrees to sushi. You need to come here with a group of friends because the location here is just beautiful. There's no reason vegan dining can't be elegant but also affordable. So they've done a really good job with the space here and the food. They also have art all over the restaurant. It always changes with the different artists. So here you can see I have a feast of options and I am so excited. So these items are some of the most popular on their menu. One of the first starters I have here are their gyozas that are filled with tofu and have a nice sauce on them. Then we have the Bang Bang Broccoli. So the reason it's called Bang Bang Broccoli is because Bang Bang is typically for a chicken dish where they bang it to tenderize it, but here they've used the sauce that's typically used for that dish on the broccoli. Then the popcorn cauliflower is one of their most popular dishes. It's like fried cauliflower and it's served with a spicy aioli, yum. And then of course, kale chips. Can't go wrong with kale chips. Look how crispy these look. Mm, amazing. And of course, let's talk about the main stars here. The sushi here is on another level. There's no reason vegan food can't be creative, hearty, healthy, and stylish. And that is exactly what they've done here. They have nigiri sushi made with a tomato. And then there's a couple type of rolls here. We have the shirango, which has avocado on top, a bell pepper, cucumber, mango, and a spicy aioli on top. And then we have the jumping jack. On top is some jackfruit, and inside there's the eona meat. That's that very popular veggie meat that's made its way across all Spain. All right, it's time to dig in. So I'm gonna try some of the gyozas. Mm. These are so moist. The tofu in there is well seasoned. The sauce that they have on it is so good. Now let's go for this bang bang broccoli. Love me a good broccoli. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Okay, if you've seen any of my past episodes, I talk about broccoli that you would want to eat for dinner. This is definitely one of those dishes where you could eat this as an entree. What better way to enjoy your veggies when it's just seasoned so well, comes with a great sauce on top, Mm. It has delicious crispy peanuts on top. Moms, this is a way you can get your kids to eat broccoli. Mm, think about it. Now we're trying the popcorn. Mm, stellar way to eat your cauliflower. You have two cruciferous vegetables here, people, that are so exciting. You have no excuse to not eat them. If you want to cleanse your palate, they make their own kombucha. This is hibiscus kombucha. They make in-house along with everything else that shows extra love and care all right people it's sushi time it's the moment you're waiting for how does it taste i'm starting with the nigiri first because 
Nigiri was always my favorite kind of sushi. So when you go vegan or vegetarian, you're like, well, I can't have nigiri anymore, what? They make an effort here, they care. Let's try this. Mm. Mm. For starters, I wanna point out that they use brown and black rice here instead of white rice. So A, that already makes the sushi more nutritious than your typical sushi. There's more fiber in here. I love the tomato. The shape of it and the presentation is on point. The texture is a little crispy because it is um, tomato. They're not trying to imitate the flavor. It's more of just the appearance, the texture. I think overall they do a very good job. Okay, trying the shirango now. So good. Okay, I'm gonna try the jumping jack. That what I mean they do get from a vendor, but everything else here they make in-house. Both of these rolls are spot on. They're hearty, they're flavorful. That barbecue jackfruit on top of the jumping jack gives it an extra kick flair. Oh my gosh. The mission of this restaurant is not to convert people to become vegan. It's more of like, hey, guess what? We have delicious vegan food. Whether you're vegan or not, come enjoy it with your friends. It tastes good. Just eat more vegetables. And that's what I love because that's essentially what I'm trying to do with this channel as well. If you become plant-based, that's great. If not, I just want you to try eating more plant-based foods and to show you that it can be really creative and delicious and healthy at the same time. It's not just salad. I love restaurants that really make an effort to make plants and vegetables shine because that should be the bulk of our diet if we want to live healthier. All of these beautiful colors just mean vitamins and what better way to enjoy it than in sushi form, right? It's only been here for about a year, but it's starting strong. People love it. I've gotten so many recommendations for this place, so make sure to make it a stop on your Barcelona trip. Afterward, I decided to take the metro to the Alfonso X stop to walk up the popular viewpoint called Turo de la Rovira. What used to be bunkers during the Civil War are now enjoyed by tourists and locals. The view is amazing, worth the walk, especially during sunset hours. I definitely enjoyed it. Next, I walked through the popular street Las Ramblas to make my way to Chalk Bakery to try their vegan pastries, where the vegan chocolate donut was definitely my fave. For my second day, I had the opportunity to meet up with a local foodie. So this morning, we are at Equilibrium Cafe for breakfast, and I am here with... Vegan Barcelona. Hi, my name is Giovanna. She has a vegan page dedicated to all the must-eat food spots here in Barcelona, which is how I found out about this place and many more. So tell me, why did you start your page? What was the mission behind it? Well, I come from New York, where there are a lot of vegan options, and people tend to be very honest. And here, I found that all the vegan page would take beautiful pictures of things, but they would rave about everything and say that everything was delicious. So I was like, okay, that can't be the truth. Yes. That, and it was very frustrating for me because I found myself um, falling for beautiful food that had color, but it just didn't taste right. I fell for so. some of that yesterday as well. <laughs> so that's why I started my page and I was like, I need to be honest. I need to just, you know, put my best foot forward and yeah. show people what the food scene is really like here. That's very true because that's how I find most of the places to eat here is yeah. through Instagram. You see these beautiful photos and you try and you're like, well, I thought that was going to be better. Yeah. You don't want to smash the restaurant because you know they put a lot of like effort into it, but at the same time, like if it's not good, they need to know. No, but wait, there's, a, there's an upside to this because the negative reviews yeah. that I've given have caused change within restaurants. Good. So they contacted me again and were like, You've changed this, you've changed this, what do you think? I've invited friends, because it's not just my palate, right? Yeah, yeah. It's different. Right. So it's caused change. Oh, that's good. See? Good to be honest. Yeah. So we're going to try a few things that Equilibrium Cafe has to offer. So Equilibrium Cafe is located in Le Champla, and it's been around for a few years, and it didn't used to be vegan, yeah. but then all of a sudden it became vegan. The vibe is very cute. It's very cozy in here. It's not a huge restaurant, but as you can see, it's very popular in here, and it has an open kitchen. You can see it, how they work. Work, how they make the food, so it's important. No one wants to eat in a dirty place. No. So we're starting off our meals with some beverages. What did you get? I got the Kickstarter, and it is orange, ginger, turmeric, and carrot. Super healthy. One thing I love about Spain is you will always find juice on like almost every menu. I got a coffee because I am obsessed with cafe con leche, which is also very popular here in Spain. You can get soy milk or some or oat milk in a lot of different yeah. restaurants or cafes. Yes. It doesn't necessarily have to be a vegan place, so leche de soja or leche de avena, know that if you're traveling to Barcelona yeah. or anywhere in Spain. Oh, it's awesome. Mm. So our food has arrived. We ordered the chickpea omelet that comes with toast and roasted tomatoes, 
and an amazing plant-based cream cheese. We were so excited to try it, we accidentally forgot to record the commentary on our first bite, but we definitely enjoyed the flavor and the texture. The cool thing about vegan chickpea omelets is that it's super filling. Here, yeah. you get good portion control, a lot of fiber and a lot of vitamins, and you get stuffed <laughs> with no fat or cholesterol. All right, now for the main course. Yeah, right? Dessert, oh my gosh. Like I said, ooey, gooey, chocolate. Mm. I love dark chocolate. It's mm. flaky. Mm -hmm. It looks like whole grain flour. Yeah. And they still manage to maintain its flakiness, which is what you wanted for something. And the outside is somewhat buttery, too. Those to show you people, it can be done. Be done. Okay. Mm. And they actually put a lot of chocolate inside. Like We weren't expecting it to be that. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be I that. Was here. <laughs> Good you open it and it's like, mm -hmm. you see that? Mm -hmm. It looks like an actual, like, real... Super legit croissant. They also offer a savory version. Avocado, tomato, cream cheese. Mm -hmm. Overall, this is a great place to come for breakfast or lunch or eat however you like. You can feel love in the food. Here it's kind of like more homey in a way. I mean, the flavor comes through in the food when you... You can tell it's been made with love. Yeah, exactly. They care. Make sure to come here. All right, now we are at Gallo Santo, which we're very excited for because oh, yeah. although Mexican food is popular here in Barcelona, there's not very many vegan or vegetarian Mexican restaurants, but this spot has you covered. So they've only been open for what, a year and two months? Yeah. They're already gaining such popularity. I've gotten so many recommendations for this place. I'm not gonna lie, I'm from the West Coast. I miss Mexican food. The doors have been open for two minutes and people are already walking in, just so you know. Yeah, I know when you come to Spain, Barcelona, you're looking for Spanish food, but like I said, after you're here for a few days, it's nice to kind of branch out and yeah. see what else Barcelona has to offer because it's such a foodie city that for you sure. want to try things that are different too. It's metropolitan, there are cultures from all over, yeah. so why not get to, you know, get international tastes? Exactly. One of the things I like here is like, as soon as you sit down, each table has its plate of salsitas and limon. I miss spiciness so much. Yeah, condiments. You do not get a lot of spicy salsas or anything in Spain because they don't eat spicy, so I like that they welcome you with spice, yes, and salsas. And they're handmade, they didn't come from a jar. Like, exactly. It actually comes from a person who makes it, which is also yes. key. Everything is gusset. Yeah. Yes. Gusseto, baby. <laughs> so we're starting off strong with a beautiful dish. I'm so excited. It's a coconut ceviche with young coconut meat, mm -hmm. which is perfect because if you know the texture of young coconut, it has like that ceviche yeah. texture. They serve it to you with these beautiful rolled cucumbers and yuca frita. Yum, that's mm -hmm. already a good sign. And some fried carrot shreds. Mm -hmm. And they serve it to you with the salsa as we mentioned. And in addition to young coconut meat, it has mushrooms and the juice that comes in it is called leche de tigre. Yeah. Dig in, let's I'm try so this. Excited. Oh, and there's hominy inside. There's so many surprises. Oh, crispy these look. All right, let's do this. Oh my God, I'm so excited. So fresh and lemony. Oh wow. Mm. This is my kind of food. Literally. You feel the flavor as soon as you bite into it. This is a party in my mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's happy food. Mm -hmm. The texture of the coconut is perfect for this yes. dish. I was just gonna say, and if you don't like mushrooms, honestly, this is marinated so well that you don't feel like you're eating mushrooms. There's heat in there too somewhere. Mm -hmm. This is well done. This hominy is mm -hmm. fire though. Fried yuca mm -hmm. is one of my favorite things in the world. She's slurping the, the I'm juice. slurping it with a spoon, the leche de tigre. It's literally just the chile, limon, y pepino. I am like drinking this, it's so good. Somebody get our straw. All right, so the tacos have arrived. We have tinga, we have yacal pibil, one with uh, mushrooms, and the other one is... Al pastor. All right. The tortilla is so nice. Cheers. Taco, cheers. The tinga is made out of carrots. I've never seen that before. Usually people make tinga out of jackfruit. I love the creativity of the shredded carrots. Mm. And this one is mildly sweet, mm -hmm. which I was not expecting, but it plays really well because I added the spice to it. And then you told me to add the lime. So you got acid, spicy, and sweet. Okay, we'll trade. Mm. Right? That was not good in the sweetness, right? You weren't expecting it, but it's not bad. It's because it has pineapple. 
Oh, Al pastor ah, claro. typically always has pineapple in it. Claro. There's a smoky flavor to the tinga. Though. They did a really good job of using carrot because tinga is usually shredded chicken. So carrot, I mean, I would have never thought of that, but it's really creative. I love it. Now we have the yaca bibin, which looks similar to the tinga, but yaca is also a fruit. Looks like they serve it too with beans as well. Yeah, and, and we have a mushroom one as well. Mm -hmm. Let's put a little bit of both spicy. I love that with the mushroom, they serve it too with like a crema. Crema is like essential in a lot of Mexican dishes. Yeah. So when a Mexican restaurant is trying to serve you something vegan without crema, you're like missing out on an element. Yeah. So when you add vegan crema, it just makes it so much better. It makes the consistency better. It makes it more real. Mushrooms is always a great option yeah. for taco fillings because of that meaty consistency. And I love the microgreens that they put on top. Oh, you're gonna like this one. Mm. It's a little messy, mm. but worth them. Definitely, they did a pretty good job of, of flavoring those mushrooms, marinating them. You could tell that they like try to incorporate some flavor in that. Mm. I know you're gonna like it. This is so good. <laughs> It's so Ooh, well. It's crazy. She, got, she gets carried away. I don't care. I get too excited. Like I said, they don't got hot sauce anymore in Spain. I get excited. Staff here is great. So nice. Make sure you come with friends so you can try a little bit of everything. Overall, of course, make this a stop on your list. So go, go vegan go way. In case you are looking for vegan versions of traditional Spanish cuisine, up the street from Gallo Santo, we stumbled upon Veggie Art, which sells a vegan tortilla española you can try. But not far from Gallo Santo is a vegan pastry shop yeah. that has raw vegan desserts also. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's where we're going. You gotta check it out. Come on. Got Dessert to. time. Okay, so Hello. we have our desserts here. But you guys, when you walk in here, the vibe is just so cute. Yeah. It's beautifully decorated with flowers. They have a little fruteria inside. You can buy products that promote feminism. And yeah, and fun times. Yes, this is definitely a place that you want to try. Mm -hmm. We have the Limon Amor. It's like a vegan lemon cheesecake. The base is made with buckwheat, oats, raisin, cacao, date. It's oh. beautifully decorated. Yeah. The reason we came here though was yeah. to try this. So I really like this thing. It's called the Golden Snickers. It's quite beautiful. It's like a caramelly and chocolatey and it's even dusted with um, some golden Gold cheese. Cheers. Right? <laughs> You're like not expecting it. It's like very caramelly. This is so legit. I love date caramel, like date peanut butter caramel. Mm -hmm. I've made it at home before. It's literally crack. Like you don't need sugar when dates are like nature's candy. This is like... Mm. It's a little pasty, but the flavor is there. The crunch of the chocolate is really nice. Mm -hmm. It's dark chocolate. The base is pretty thick and crumbly. And the proportion is good. Mm -hmm. You had a yeah. bite? Uh, sorry, I should have. No, <laughs> that just that just goes to show you how good it looks. You're like, screw the camera, we're going I'm for sorry, it. Sorry guys, sorry guys. We can get her reaction. Mm. Right? It's tart, it's tangy, it's smooth, not heavy mm -mm. or fatty. I'm telling you, I always I've said this in other videos. Though sometimes I eat non-vegan desserts. I prefer vegan cheesecake 100% over real cheesecake. Oh, really? I, I love hate that. I love real that. cheesecake. And it glides. Mm. Like, if you see us cut it, mm. it like glides all the way down. It's like smooth. Mm. Okay, that's right, soft. Keep Now we're at Demasier. We picked up a friend. We needed reinforcements. Yeah, we couldn't eat anymore. Behind the scenes of fruit mm -hmm. crawling. So we're here because they have a vegan cinnamon roll. They got two options. They have the classic and then they yeah. have a Nutella version, but I've been told that the regular one. Yeah, it's better. I, I recommended it. So you guys feel the, uh, the opposite way. Go for it, but I'm down for the classic as yeah. well. So And she got it heated up, which is a very important yes. part. You got to warm it up so the frosting is ooey gooey and everything. And we have a non-vegan with us who's yes. also going to try it. So let us know how it. she feels. <laughs> Let's try this. Let's it's try it. Ooey gooey. It's soft as good. Mm. But I can see. I mean, I can see. It's amazing. Mm. It's moist. Mm -hmm. I like that because mm -hmm. I hate dry cinnamon rolls. Mm -hmm. Vegan ones sometimes are dry. And the icing is perfect. Because mm -hmm. like you don't, because sometimes they don't get it in the rolls. Like sometimes they'll just like put it over it. But like More. I that. Mm -hmm. I'm happy. It's another place you gotta check out.
I'm at Teresa Carl's now and this is a very popular restaurant here in Barcelona and the reason I came here is because they have a selection of vegan croquetas which croquetas, yes, is something you have to try when you come to Spain. You know, it's typical tapas, pinchos, croquetas or something that you have to try and they have a variety of vegan versions here and I also got the Bomba Barceloneta which is like, instead of patatas bravas, you can get this. It's just made of potatoes and mushrooms inside. This thing is looks just as good so I'm gonna try this. Well, if you cut into it, it literally looks Looks like a bomba, so it's like a big potato ball. Mm. This is very good. Oh, it's pretty oily because it's deep fried, but the aioli on top is very good. Great flavor. I love that it's filled with mushrooms. Okay, I'm gonna try one of the croquetas. Mm, I tried a mushroom one. This is very good. There's three kinds of croquetas here, so it's pretty hearty. This one has spinach and rice. Teresa Carl's is a sister restaurant to Flax and Kale, which is what I showed you earlier for breakfast. This is the original restaurant, and then Flax and Kale branched off out of it. Overall, all of these burgers are very good, very flavorful, not disappointed. They also have a variety of menu, like entrees and dessert. But if you're looking for just a place about a big gun, little bites in here and there, this is a good way to start. That's a wrap. I hope you guys enjoyed this Barcelona video. There's so many places to go and so many things to see and so many things to try that it's so hard to squeeze in 48 hours. But I hope you guys enjoyed what I've shown you so far. Giovanna from Vegan Barcelona. Shout out to her. Make sure to follow her if you're ever in Barcelona because she knows where to go and she has some great reviews. If you like what you saw, make sure to subscribe, like this video, and comment on any questions or your favorite clip. Thanks. Bye.